So I'm gonna show you guys how to create a miter joint and a butt joint when you're attaching two slabs together. So one thing that you may have done before is just a simple butt joint where I just take one edge and I attach it right up next to the other without cutting or prepping the clay at all. So what I do is I still just score and slip the two pieces that I'm going to attach together, making sure that I fill all those cracks and crevices, all those score marks, both sides, and then I'm just attaching those together, wiggle so I make sure that that joint is secure, push out any of the slip, and then I am gonna show you guys the support coil on this butt joint, and then just basically explain how you can use that for the miter joint as well. So right now I might have a weak attachment, so I can roll a support coil, and I can press it in on both sides, and the larger the slab piece that you're making, the more important these support coils are. If you have a very small piece, you may not even need support coils, but they do help keep those walls attached together. And then I like if I'm making, say, a slab box, I want to make sure that this is still looking nice on the inside. So I can take my finger, I can smooth this out. I can even take the smooth side of my paintbrush or my butter knife and I can run that over the edge to really smooth that out so it looks like it's not a separate piece of clay. Now if you see the outside, we can still see the joint on this. And so I can take my flat metal scraper and I can scrape that until I don't see that anymore. If the clay, when you're attaching it, is leather hard as it should be when you're attaching slabs together. I forgot to mention that. So make sure it's leather hard so that way it's sturdy. If it tends to shrink at different rates, the two slabs were different drynesses due to working on it in different class periods, you might see that crack reappear. And that's kind of the negative side of using those butt joints. So it's better to use a miter joint. I'm gonna show you guys how to make that with first the beveling tool, because that's the easiest way. When you're in class with me, you're gonna use this. I cannot send these home. These are $12 a piece. If you wanna buy one, awesome. Again, it's not required. So if I want to attach these two pieces of clay together, I'm actually gonna create a 90 degree joint. So you can see this line is gonna cut that clay at 90 degrees. I'm gonna line it up right on the edge, just like this, and just pull it across the table. But you do want it on the table, otherwise you might mess up. So all I'm gonna do is just take that wire cutter and cut that. Okay, now I know when I'm attaching these two together, some kids got confused last year. I need my 45 going this way. So I wanna make sure when I set it down on the table that I've got another 45 here. Now I can take these two 45s and see it makes that 90 degree angle. But if these do separate, you're gonna see the crease right here and they tend to separate less and the seam is hidden in your piece on the corner. So I would score and slip these together just like I did the butt joint. If you wanna add the support coil, you can. But I think you guys understand that enough. I don't need to show you again with this particular one. I am gonna show you guys that you can also um, use this tool on the other side if you want, say, a triangular vessel. I've already cut one of these. So if I use the back side, it's more of a 30 or a 60. And then I could attach and have a triangular piece instead of using the square. And then if you guys are making these at home and you don't have this beveling tool, I'm just gonna pull this apart so you guys can see this. All right, I'm gonna zoom out because I'm gonna use the edge of the table. What I'm gonna do is line up a one inch centimeter line on here, or one inch centimeter, one centimeter. I'm gonna mark it one centimeter from the edge. If you don't have a ruler at home, you're gonna have to eyeball. And again, the expectations of what you're doing at home are going to be different than what you're doing in class. So I've marked these off. I can draw the line on here. And what I'm trying to do is cut from the base. So I'm going to line up the slab flush with the edge here. I'm going to push my straight edge. So it could be a ruler. It could be a wooden board you have at home. It can really be anything. And then I'm going to take, say, my butter knife, and I'm going to line it up with the table and my piece right here and I'm gonna cut it, creating that 45. So I'm gonna pull this up so you guys can see this a little bit better. So with my butter knife, it pulled the clay over quite a bit, that's okay. 
All right, so I just wanna pull that across so it's creating that 45 degree angle. Some of you guys can just eyeball a 45 degree angle and that's absolutely fine. So if I had a slab and I know I want a mitered edge on here, I still would push it towards the edge and then you can eyeball a 45 degree. That might actually work better for some of you. Okay, so that's how you guys can create that at home or in class.